Hello there. Only one Kenobi here. Only one. I'd like to continue the room tour by giving you a look at this shelf that you're just sweeping past now. The prequel shelf. This is the what we looked at last time. Link in the, descri in the description for this if you'd like to see it. This is my original trilogy collection, all in chronological order. So it includes, you know, Solo, Rebels, Rogue One, then we go into A New Hope. And then at the bottom I've got the sequel trilogy. Sorry about the mess. A little bit of mess. I'm just sort of moving into this place, if you know what I mean. Just getting my life together after lockdown, a complicated moving house at this time, and there's crazy st craziness going on. But um, so there's that. There's been a slight change actually. I've shifted a few things to have the cantina right there. I wanted the cantina kind of snug in the corner. See, it goes up to the wall there, so it's kind of got that indoor feel. That's the only change I've made. I've shifted that sort of. There's Rogue One that leads into a new hope there, and then I've got this. Final battle with, you know, Vader and Obi Wan, and then it leads off into the Battle of Yavin, Empire Strikes Back. Anyway, I've done all that, so please do check out the previous video if you'd like to have an exclusive tour of the prequels. But um, now it's time to look at the prequel. The, sorry, did I say that right? Check out the video in the description if you want to look at the seat. Oh, I got the original trilogy, and then this video is going to all be about the prequels. So let's do it. I'm on a wide angle right now, but that's going to change when I cut now. Let's do a tour. Boom! All right, actually, before I cut off from the wide angle, I want to give you a little explanation as to what's going on in each shelf. On the top shelf there, that was where I had the Phantom Menace start. But what I had was I had a load of Darth Maul figures, because um, there were loads of Mauls released, even back in 1999, and Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. So what I've got here is a special Emergence of the Sith shelf, this top one, I'm going to go closer in in a minute. Basically a tribute to Maul, and then some nice dioramas of them battling. Which is significant really, that's the first time, well, the emergence of the Sith, the re-emergence of the Sith. Uh, you know, that's the first time they kind of went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Jedi. This is Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and I've got two shelves for, for Revenge of the Sith because I really want to spread out that collection, and yeah, I suppose I've got more figures in that line than any other. Oh, I, I tell you, a real lie. I'm so sorry. Let me go through that again. Mole Tribute, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Clone Wars, Revenge of the Sith 1, Revenge of the Sith 2. So let's give you a close-up look now. Boom! Let's just start on this mole here. So it's very dark, so I just thought I'd bring him forward. That mole there has got the head or the hood of a vintage collection more, but it's actually from the, speaking of Emergence of the Sith, the Emergence of the Sith 2 pack that came with Darth Sidious. So this is, as I, said, as I said, on the top shelf, I did used to have all that you see there on the top of this Donkey Kong machine, but actually there on the top of that is a tribute to their Royal Expanded Universe, Sith. If you know my channel, you know I used to have loads of Sith in a small corridor of my old place, all in one row down the wall, like the wall of Sith, because I love Sith. But now I just haven't kind of finalised where I'm going to have them, but I've got them on the, on the arcade machine. But for now, I just thought I'd just do a, a tribute to Maul. So it's kind of because I've got this centrepiece here, you know. <laughs> I love certain cinema. What are they called now? Movie scenes. They're, they're great, you know, and I love... I mean, these figures have got hardly any articulation, but I love certain sculpts. A bit like, right, this here. Look at that. I'll never forget seeing that in a shop. I was in Hamley's in London, and I bought this cinema scene. You can't do anything with it. It's like a statue. But th that helmet just blew me away at the time. It was 2003. I was 22 years old, and I saw that, and I thought, whoa, that is a Vader helmet. And they've done good and bad Vader helmets since. But anyway, so what I'm saying is, that looks really cool, that. Look at Maul with the hood on. Only hard goods could do that. And it's brilliant. That's how he looks when he's got that hood up. And bit by bit, as the movie goes, Maul reveals himself. First off, you see him with one one sort of hilt lightsaber, and then, he, then, it re then it reveals to be a double. In fact, you know it's a double from the uh, <laughs> watching the trailers and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But, and then he reveals himself, uh, takes his cloak off, and this one here came with a Dooku in a Sith Legacy pack or something like that. Sith Evolutions. But um, that's cool, that, because that figure looks terrible from the front. I don't even want to show it to you. Well, I will, actually. Look at him. <laughs> oh, my God. He looks like he's having a laugh. But um, 
from there with the sculpting, it's like that shot of him when he's looking at Qui-Gon escaping. <laughs> you know that bit? That's the melody that's played by John Williams at the time. This is just uh, for my own personal love of this, you see. Back in about 2000, the early 2000s, I got some of these figures and... There was like a, lots of different types. There was like a stood still type figure for Maul, Qui-Gon and Obi. And then there was a more flared, articulated style. I mean, none of them were particularly well articulated, but these ones had a pose about them that suggested action, whereas these were more stationary. So I liked these two facing that way, as in Obi and Qui-Gon, because of two reasons, really. Well, the braid there looks really good. So they look much better this, this way. The facial sculpt weren't as good that way. Um, yeah, anyway, and that, that was just what I like to do. And this, oh yeah, and that's right. And this mole had such a good facial sculpt. I wanted him looking this way. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm just giving you a little bit of a behind scenes inside scoop on how I like to, how, oh, I used to have stuff. I mean, these figures are very old now, but I just wanted to have them as I used to have them, if that makes sense. I hardly had any figures back then but now look jesus look how many i've got now anyway so and here is this famous sort of diorama you can do with these three figures i think one came in the 99 line like that but this figure of qui-gon came from the power of the power of the jet yeah power of the jedi line and i took the poncho off so i could add into these two which did come in the 99 line uh there were so many figures for Maul and Obi-Wan and all that. But anyway, that's that's my little top shelf. It's just like a little intro to the to uh, a significant movie in the timeline of the, uh, you know, the Skywalker saga. It's the emergence of Darth Maul and Sidious to the Jedi, their, their reveal. Now, here we are now, the start of Phantom Menace. I like to display by just sort of, well, they're all in chronological and... I suppose I've got less figures than other films, but still, what we've got here is just a nice sort of spread. So we start off with the Trade Federation. STAP there looks quite good. When you've got a mix of different uh, droids there. This Qui-Gon figure was a real disappointment when I got it. I wanted it because I wanted one with hard goods that looked like I've seen movie posters of Qui-Gon like that. In fact, it's in the other room, I can't be bothered going through there now, but... Publicity shot of Qui-Gon. This figure is definitely based on. Anyway, you've got the Trade Federation. I, I put him there just because, yeah, he just fitted in. Because he did go after these guys, didn't he? And then this is uh, the first mole figure I ever bought, actually. Again, it's a bit like that cinema scene one. It's hard goods, and he's only got one of his blades deployed. But I love this Sid Sidious figure as well. Oh, hang on a minute, what's going on with the focus? Look at him on that angle as well, just see the nose. Because facial, it's not that great, but from that angle it is. Anyway, skip through. I want to talk about yellowing these two figures here. I always had them stood side by side. These go back a long way in my collection. Look how yellowed they are now. The reason they're yellowed and the reason the backs of these two figures are yellowed. Can you see the difference in tone? Look at this, you can look at the front of this Obi-Wan. Look how white that is. I'm going to look at the back of him. There is no question, there's no doubt, because I moved away from home. I bought these when I was about, say, was I 19 or 20? But then I moved off and I lived in London. And all these figures were just left on the shelf of my, you know, bedroom at my, my folks. And I know for a fact that my mother would never have had the window shut. Like, I keep this, shut this curtain here now. Uh, I keep the curtain shut, but uh, that she didn't. <laughs> she doesn't like to do that. So these probably took a hit of sunlight every single day, at one point of the day. The front of this guy is yellow. And on the back he's not. That's sunlight, nothing else. I was really worried. I used to have, a, for a period of time, I had all my figures in jiffy bags. I'll do a video about that, but apparently you can get these that are 
non-acid or something like that. I don't know what I bought. I never knew that. It was too late because by the time I found out about that information, I was about to take them all out of packaging. But out of the Jiffy bags, my figures, to put them on this loose collection that you see here. I just know for a fact that these haven't yellowed by being in a in an acid or a Jiffy bag that's got the wrong type of chemical in it. These have gone yellow because of sunlight. There's no question. So where were we? Where were we here? So then we move through. We've got a little nod to Tatooine here and the meeting of the boy. And then a little bit of a political collection here. This figure of Padme is beautiful on the card, but it looks terrible from the front, in my opinion. So I've got her face in that way. Looks beautiful, that figure that way. Having a, having a dialogue with our friend here, Senator, Senator Palpatine. What's happening? And we've got the two Jedi there. I did used to have these two right here, just so you got Master and Apprentice good, Master and Apprentice bad, but I moved them out of the way just to spread things out a bit. We've got more droids there just to sort of move into the Battle of Naboo and this nice cluster here. And I've done a bit of head swapping. See, there's a an actual rebel, not rebel, um, Naboo pilot. There's Anakin, by the way. He's here and not over there because that's Anakin as he would be in the uh, Starfighter. So this guy's a head swap. There he is again, our friend, the Navy commander, the Royal, not Royal Navy, the Imperial Navy commander. He's uh, from the Empire. He makes a good head swap with him. So we've got two pilots. Came from Tungori, that one. This one I opened off the card. So this guy here doesn't have a cloak. Sometimes with Tungori, he is missing accessories. And there, Ah, Captain Tarfel's there, I think his name is. I would love to have the Gungan Warrior as well to sort of army build my Gungans at the back there. Not many of them. And this one here, see, this is a little bit of a nod to... The funeral prior of um, the burn, well, the burning, the cremation of Qui Gon Jinn. That's how they would have all looked. And then this here is the training of Anakin. This is a little bit of a leap now beyond Phantom Menace. This, is actually, strictly speaking, I could have that from the Attack of the Clones, but really, you know, him at a young age would have been training with a variety of Jedi. Should we have a look at the Attack of the Clones now? That was Phantom Menace. And down we go. And we start off with Count Dooku. I know that you don't see... I know that you don't see Dooku until much later, but he is part of the line of activity. Around about the time of the Phantom Menace, he would have been leaving the Order and recruiting this fella here, Django. That's why I've got so many Django fig fat figures. It was tough to spread them. I don't like having them too close to each other. Um, and then you have the clo the Kaminoans. I know that they are not seen until later in the Attack of the Clones, but it's still all happening. The cloning process has begun. And then we have this uh, Padme figure here, by the way. I did have her at the beginning of my Attack of the Clones run, but my patrons will know that because they saw a video of my prequel shelves at Yonks ago. If you want to be a patron, you know what to do. <laughs> so anyway, so then we have Zam Wessel and Django. And then we've got now a collection of Jedi. I love these two together. On the right, we've got Obi-Wan from the Vintage Collection. On the left, from the Black Series, that's the best young Hayden Christensen head sculpt they ever did. And it's not focusing on him. It's still not working. And they sh... Oh, man, I've added that cloak from somewhere else. But that would be awesome on a vintage card. Don't you agree? Uh, and then in here are all these 2002 clones. Ah, Jesus. From Attack, I'm thinking of Attack of the Clones. All these are Jedi from 2002, so the articulation is limited. In fact, this line of figures I really... Um, not detest, but I didn't like a lot of them because I think I started off with an Obi-Wan, which you'll see later, and it was just... Like a step back from the 1999 line. They were all like in special poses and stuff. It worked better for the Jedi because they were so... In, they, you know, they had lots of action scenes. But they're obviously headed by Yoda there. But they just look nice in one little cluster. Look at the blue tack on his hand. I found a place for all of them. Because obviously 
yeah, anyway, so here's this Django. This is a brilliant Django fat figure. Had to have him sort of in the middle of everything. So you've got the Jedi, you've got the politicians, and then you've got him who is responsible for a lot of the mis mischief and, well, the clone template, isn't he? It's a great figure. The politicians, a wonderful figure, that of Palpatine. I really love that head sculpt. And then you've got Dexter Jester, that's Bosk Bounty's favourite character, did everybody know? He loves Dexter Jester. And in fact, he, he hates... <laughs> What's that guy called again? That Jedi dude. He dislikes Ponkrell, he dislikes him <laughs> because of him. Um, and then we've got this, just to symbolise the love that grows between Anakin and Padme. Come on, focus. See, that's a good figure from behind. The facial sculpt is awful. It doesn't look anything like Aiden Christensen, whereas that does. So I don't have him facing the front, I've got him facing that way, just so we can get the braid. Because the, the sculpt of the braid is great. Look at the that soft goods there. Brilliant. That would make a really good custom for a young Dooku, that or something. I don't know how Dooku dressed, but I've seen customs. People have used that. Anyway, this guy's fallen over. Look, the Geonosian warrior. That came from the Legacy Collection builder droid. I'll just hold him up for now. Then we've got young Django. That's sort of a... Because there's so much little space. I'd love to have a bit more space and more figures for the Attack of the Clones because I'd have him and Django on a landing pad to, with another Obi-Wan figure to have them battling out. But I don't have that, unfortunately. Speaking of Obi-Wan in battles, this is now... A nod to the Geonosian Arena. That uh, uh, that Mace Window figure is horrendous, but actually coupled with this Obi Wan figure, which is also, dare I say, horrendous in terms of articulation, they look kind of good because they do stand back to back like that in the uh, arena. So there they are. He's got a little bit of yellowing going on as well there, but not that much actually. He's all right. Him, he would have been on. <laughs> a shelf in sunlight for significantly less. So I like to waste nothing with these, uh, with my figure collection. So this Dooku is really past its best, but together with Django, they look kind of good. No, in the movie, Dooku stands with, or he, they stand together. You know, it's almost like Vader and Boba. But um, the articulation of that Dooku is horrendous. But and the cape's a bit dodgy, but. Just in a pose together as a, a duo, they look kind of cool. And I've got him without his helmet, as he would in the Geonosian Arena. A G Geonosian Arena. I'm talking about Django there. And then these two. And I've got the other variant of the young Anakin there. With the slightly brown hair. It's not as good. Nowhere near as good as that, in fact. But he looks pretty cool. Because I just thought I'd like to see him with a green lightsaber as he was in the Geonosian Arena. Oh, come on. Thank you. I'm not very patient with the focus of this camera. I've got a sprinkling of droids now. We've got the battle droids. Django. That's a really good Django fit, by the way. So I wanted that up front and centre. Like a movie post. I've said this in my last video. I, I kind of have them like, they're not facing each other. Like they have that fight together. But instead they're just sort of standing almost side by side with their backs to each other. So they're not actually standing as if they're friends. But it's kind of like a movie poster that I like it. And that's a really good Mace Windu that. It's a 5 POA one, but I always liked the facial sculpt of that. He looks really good with a hood on, by the way. Not a hood, you know what I mean, a cloak, but I actually sacrificed the cloak on him and put it on this Anakin here. I wanted both of those guys to wear cloaks. So, but also in this battle, he's not wearing a, you know, he's not wearing a robe, but um, he also kind of used to work with these guys down there in Revenge of the Sith. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So there we have some, a bit of an army building thing going on with the Geonosian battle droids. A small collection of clones there. I've saved all my vintage collection clones for my Republic gunship. But, you know, these guys look pretty cool together. Great sculpt, that's a really good clone, that. That came from the uh, Leg Saga Legends line. Been going for a while, but it's a good one. That's the original uh, sneak preview clone. Not so good, terrible articulation, but just standing in the background is all right and then you've got this i've got the pilot talking with that's not cody and then we've got that yoda there 
which is pretty cool. That's a good Yoda figure. In the background, another... <laughs> it's bad, but it's good. The Anakin figure is bad. It doesn't really look like Anakin Skywalker, but it's good because it's got mag magnetic hands. And from that angle, looking that way, it looks really cool. That Dooku's also got a magnet thing going on. So I've got him holding it like that, which it looks weird, but he could be sort of like mid-spin. You know what I'm saying? Like It's like a snapshot of their duel together. So I like that. And that's the end of Attack of the Clones. You've got Anakin and Dooku facing off. They'll meet each other again. And then you've got the clones. And then that's Attack of the Clones, ladies and gentlemen. I'll do one final pan at the end like I've just done there so you can kind of see it. And then here we are, the beginning of Attack... Uh, yeah, yeah, the Clone Wars. This figure right here of Anakin is brilliant. Um, it's a really good figure. I remember when I bought that. If you're watching Blacked Out Ewoks, I bought this in Wandsworth, in the Entertainer, when I lived there. It was the first kind of figure I remember thinking, wow, it's like super articulation, or ball joints anyway. From that angle, he's not that good, but I do like him from that angle there. The cloak looks great. The reason he's here and not in any other part of Attack of the Clones is because he's got the mechanical hand. It's supposed to be... It's not removable. I decided to make this the start of the Clone Wars. Look at it. This is this section here of my. This is all Clone Wars now. We are on the Clone Wars shelf, but this is a nod to Gendi Tartakovsky. All these figures linked with Gendi Tartakovsky's Clone Wars. You've got Grievous there, and he is a badass in Clone Wars. Grievous, like scary. Um, and then you've got Ventress there, just pre-turning to the dark side. I love to see Ventress holding green and blue. And then this Dooku, I've got tons of this Dooku. It's a great figure. It's from Revenge of the Sith, actually, 2005. But he's, it, it was in a job lot I won him, and he's not got his cloak. So I just thought, well, that looks like Dooku. Dooku does look like that in the Clone Wars, uh, Dave Filoni Clone Wars, like when he's at home in his little palace. Like he's in his, like, you know... <laughs> Um, and then some more, and then here we are, clones again. Speaking of Gendi Tartakovsky, you've got Captain Fordo, and behind him, these two linked together. He came in the um, Blu ray commemorative pack. But this clone here, who has the same hel helmet sculpt as him, is definitely from the very beginning of the Gendi Clone Wars. See, he's got the poncho on. There was a load of them fighting in the mud. You see them for about two seconds. And behind them, I've got Ka Commander Cody talking to Captain Fordo without a helmet, which was realistic to have happened because Cody is in the original Clone Wars series. So you see Cody before Revenge of the Sith. For most people who would never have seen that animated series, the first time you saw Cody was Revenge of the Sith. But anyway, I've got this Barris Offie here. She's technically from the... Um... Oh. She's part of the Attack of the Clones line. However... There's a great segment in Gendi Tartakovsky's Clone Wars. I keep saying Gendi Tartakovsky so many times, I hope you're not getting bored. Uh, they go off to Ilum looking for crystals, lightsaber crystals. So that's why they're together here. And then you've got a really cool figure. In that same series, Anakin goes off on his trials. Or so-called trials. He literally goes off on his own into the wilderness almost. It's fantastic. He comes of age there and he has this thing. The reason he's got that tattoo is some kind of worm leaps on his skin and makes that tattoo. I don't know if it's permanent or it's temporary. And then we move into a more familiar era of the Clone Wars, of course, Dave Filoni, which kind of fits in, say, you know, I know that technically the end of Gandhi's is the start of Revenge of the Sith, but really, Anakin's come of age, he's got longer hair, he's no longer a Padawan in this, is he? And then you've got these guys, and then you've got some villains in the back there. I've put Aura Singh with um, uh, the animated um, Cad Bane. So you've got animated figures. I like to keep them together, and realistic ones are separate. This is kind of a realistic flavor here. Then we have an animated thing, all in one tight shot. And then we go into a more realistic version of the Clone Wars. Really coming of age is Anakin and Obi, and all these from the vintage collection, these two anyway. This was a Phantom Menace figure, but who the hell cares, man? He's definitely in the Clone Wars. My man Quinlan Voss. 
and then in the behind the Oan then you've got um, Shakti and then this definitely needs to be with these guys look at him that's a definitely a realistic Clone Wars Mace Windu should have been in the vintage collection yet another example and then I've got clones including Wolf there and then I thought I'd put Doom there as well and then because all these guys you do see them in the Clone Wars without well Jesus of course you do including that Cody I'm glad I could put him there because there's a better Cody than that coming up for Revenge of the Sith figure I mean and then here in the back I just sort of put these two together as a nod to the recent series six was it how many have they done that was it seven I think it was seven wasn't it maybe hang on like four five six there was well, well whatever the latest series because they did well they only had 13 episodes wasn't it before Disney took over and then it wrapped up the whole thing and it overcrossed with Revenge of the Sith as well didn't it Oh my God, I've just knocked Grievous, he's gonna fall over. Let's look at this now. Oh, I put him there because why not? I did have him with my Revenge of the Sith stuff here. We'll see that in a minute. <gasps> but I put him there, just why not? Why not have him with all these other commanders? That's Neo. I've got another Neo though with, um, I could open and put him down here. But anyway, and then we move into the beginning of Revenge of the Sith, but it's not quite there yet, but you can't have Grievous. This is a brilliant Grievous. Can't have Grievous and not have, have him also on the Clone Wars shelf because he is part of it. I've always, I know I had him there, but here he is. This is literally the start of Revenge of the Sith. This would have been when they kidnapped Palpatine. In fact, I did have these two and then on the same shelf as what goes on there, but we'll come to that in a minute. This is a brilliant figure of Grievous. I bought it loose on eBay. I added, had to add those two lightsabers myself because they didn't come with it. Um, he's random, I know. He's, I did have him with, with my other <laughs> battle droids up there, but the thing is, the reason I put him there is because there are red security droids at the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. And then here we are. Now we have the prime of Anakin and Obi. Um, technically, that's... Vintage Collection 1, except I didn't buy it in that. It's the same figure that you get in the Vintage Collection for Obi-Wan, and I added the cloak. This is a Saga Collection on the Silver Chase. Anakin, it comes with the robe, you see. It's just them stood side by side. By side. It's a little nod in terms of my collecting to this. It's a nod to that. In my own mind, Master and Apprentice on their, on a job, you know. Top of their game. Sorry, the camera works all over the place. So then, you have the final face-off. Dooku, Obi and Anakin. It's quite ironic. This Anakin here is a really dodgy, bad one that I got in a job lot. You know one of those eBay job lots when someone chucks in a load of figures? And I've, I've had it in a box for a few years and then I actually thought, I need another Obi just to sort of face off with Dooku. That Anakin is the same one as this one, but he looks quite good from that angle. It's a terrible, terrible is a bit harsh for me to say it's terrible, but the facial sculpt ain't great. I'll show you a good facial sculpt Anakin in a minute, but looking that way, he looks awesome. My powers have doubled since the last time we met Count. So there you are, there's them. And then this fella, look at him, the puppet master. And then here, Dooku and Anakin. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. I love that. Brilliant. Kill him. Kill him now. I shouldn't. <laughs> do it. Let's move on. Now then, this one. I did this because I wanted to have, this is actually an Obi-Wan cloak, this is actually an Obi-Wan cloak that I painted brown, dark brown. And it's kind of the last time these two, you know, they're falling apart, aren't they? He's getting pulled by this guy here, he's all—he's a mess, Anakin, in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, so that's just them. I like to have matching goods, I wouldn't want to have a soft and hard goods together, it doesn't work, so that's better. So I've used acrylic paint and painted that. It's a terrible Anakin figure, so he's just looking that way. It's almost like he's subtly looking over towards Palpatine. You know, he's losing him. Anakin, you know, Obi-Wan is losing his 
the pupil. Let's pan over this very quickly. We've got the amassing of the second phase of clones here. I'll just chuck that in. It doesn't really work there, but I, you know, I didn't want to leave them out. I'm sort of saying goodbye to Dooku there and not Dooku, uh, Grievous, sorry. And it's a bit random here. I don't, I'm not happy I don't have that other guy, that species from Utapau. Anyway, so then we've got the Wookiees. This is almost like a mock-up of one of the hangar bays, maybe, in Coruscant. And again, the hard goods is working well there for this guy. I prefer soft goods, obviously, on the Jedi, but looking that way, he's almost like he's directing a battalion of clones. And then we move into a little bit of a diorama for the uh, setup for the Battle of Kashyyyk. Including that random Yoda there. And then the formidable trio, a quad, quad quartet here. Look at this. Badass figures all around here. There's a brilliant Kit Fisto there. He looks so good, Kit Fisto, in Revenge of the Sith. Forgotten his name. Forgotten his name. S18, Sas18, and Mace Window. I'm really sorry, I can't remember this guy's name. I get him from confused with the other guy from. Um, he's in Attack of the Clones. They look very similar. That guy. They're different characters. Would you believe? Same species, obviously. And then look at this. The revelation of Palpatine to Anakin. That is another figure that looks crap from the front, but from behind it looks good. Threatening. Kind of like pointing the, his finger towards, you're the Sith Lord. That would also work pointing towards Padme. But this figure looks pretty bad from the front. Look at him. <laughs> It's like he's on Halloween or a goth band or something. And I know that Palpatine doesn't have his saber out for Anakin. He does later for these guys. But it just looks good to see him standing there like that. So it's a little bit inaccurate in my timeline here like that. But I could do with getting another figure of him. And having him facing these guys like that with his lightsaber. I don't know. Oh, it's just dropped. Right, let's move on. Last shelf, last shelf in here, yeah. Oh my goodness, man. I'm tiring myself. Now we have army building galore here. We have the 212th Battalion. A real mix of figures there. Vintage Collection, Saga, you name it. 2005, whatever. But uh, led by Commander Cody. These are great figures. See, they came with that stand there from the Saga Collection, I believe. They've been re released elsewhere as well. These were good for army building. They're the five POA ones. So they're in the background, like forced perspective. They, these kind of had slightly bigger helmets than those did. And speaking of big helmets, that's why he's not wearing his. That's a vintage collection one. They are really oversized. So he's just got his back to us. Like they're all talking. They're all in. Could be in a hangar bay. Could be wherever really. But that's kind of a nod to the start of order. 66, speaking of Order 66. Great figure of Anakin that. We've got the March of the 501st. The Jedi Purge. So this could... It, it's made to look like it's... Uh, just a load of them hanging out. I like the idea of having them... In a different setup there. So obviously they did, when they were marching they were all on their feet. But look at this guy, he just looks like he's hanging out. Waiting for the uh, the okay to, to go head off to the Jedi Temple. But then I wanted Sidious with him. I know he wasn't on the march of the Jedi Temple, but it's just nice to have him overlooking him. Again, like a movie poster. Just to subtly tell a story in itself. But you've got Anakin there. He looks so evil. This figure's really good. And off he goes, man. Twisted by the dark side. Young Skywalker is, or whatever was, has become. Now, the younglings I have up here, I used to have with this guy, but I just thought I'd have one. This is Jet Lucas, or whatever his name is. I know that he saw off the 501st in the hangar bay. There's been a rebellion, sir. But I just wanted to have this awesome silhouette of Anakin Skywalker facing, it could have been any Jedi that he finished off. Just it's, he looks, he looks great in Revenge of the Sith. Hayden Christensen. This figure's terrible. It's the it's this is another figure five POA 
Anakin that I've put this shell on. This is the all-in-one Anakin figure that you can get with the burnt-up figure. Where is the burnt-up one? That one there, see him? You can have him with this on and a head swap. So it's like a two-in-one figure. Oh, come on, what's going on with the focus? But yeah, so I basically I've used the hard goods from that just to have this diorama of Anakin's deeds. The track called that on the soundtrack. Another one of these figures, VC-13, this time threatening Padme, a pregnant Padme. I've got an opening of that on my Patreon and also a little bit of an Anakin tour, but again, it's such a good figure that. I got that in a job lot loose, this one, and it came with that lighter colored robe. I think that could be a Luke Skywalker robe, that. Again, you've got the politicians. There's not many politicians, but then again, that is the essence of the rebellion there. You've got Luke and Leia's foster parents. And then of course, I've forgotten her name. I'll come back to that. Really sorry. I've been doing quite well so far. What's her name? Oh my God. Final battles. You've got the Emperor versus Yoda. And then we've got Master versus Apprentice. Battle on uh, Mustafa. That's all I wanted to do, just face enough. The battle is probably way too more, too complicated than they needed to do it. But um, that bit at the end where they just look at each other when they're on the lava. I'm still thinking of her name, it's really doing my head in. And then the final chapter, I just thought I'd do a wall of the Red Guard. The Red Guard could have been anywhere really, I could have had even had them on the Attack of the Clones, I'm sure that Palpatine was using them even then. Palpatine had been in office for a decade at that stage, which in itself is a long time, and a few more years pass, and he's still in office. I know it seems a bit random me having the burnt up Anakin there, but I just wanted to use him. And he's just sort of overshadowing this Vader here, which is from the 30th anniversary. I always felt that that Vader looked the most like what... He seemed to have a really big helmet in Revenge of the Sith. Where is Padme? Is she alright? Is she safe? And then he doesn't look like that in Revenge of the Sith. He might do, actually. He's got his hood up. He looks like this in Revenge of the Sith. But this is just expanded universe now. It's Vader and the Emperor going off with their lightsaber swinging. Who knows? They might have had a few adventures. They might have gone off to see a few Jedi. And... Um, it's really, really annoying because um, I've done the tour there and I can't stop filming because I'm still trying to think of that goddamn rebel, rebel's name. Oh, God. I can't remember. I hate that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I'm just going to hang on a little bit because I want to try and remember her name. <laughs> I'm just going to walk around this room. So thank you so much for watching. This is a really long video. This is 35 minutes long. And it's been a pleasure giving you a tour. Um, in the last video, I was very self-conscious. I was saying, oh, I hope I'm not boring you and this, that, the other. I'm very conscious of the fact that I'm constantly talking in these videos. But a lot of you have enjoyed that, which is great. I'm explaining. I've got so much I have to say and so much I can say. But uh, I hope you have enjoyed it and you stayed with me. And um, it's really... Um, a shame that I can't think of um, her name. What was her f name, man? Oh. Hello there, this is the end now, and I have just remembered her name. It is, of course, Mon Mothma. That was doing my head in. I had to stop and go on Google in the end. I typed in Rebel Leader Star Wars, and then she was there. So Mon Mothma it was. So anyway, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, do remember to hit the like button. It helps the channel. As everyone always says, I never say that. But it's true, it does help the channel. And of course, make sure you subscribe for more. Because there will be... A, sorry about the mess. There will be uh, more to do with regards to these figures. Moving forward. Thank you so much for watching one more time. This has been Only One Kenobi. Only One.